Hello everyone and welcome back to some 60 frames per second action from round 6 of the 2019 US Championship. Uh, it's former World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana versus Jeffrey Xiong. Uh, we already seen one game where Jeffrey uh, defeated the uh, la last year's champion uh, Samuel Shankland and we've already seen one game where uh, Caruana missed a win against Dominguez uh, and this is a really exciting game. It does come from a Berlin defense but you'll see it's exciting nonetheless and I have prepared the standings after round six uh, so you'll get to enjoy that as well but only after we check out the game so without further ado uh, Caruana has the white pieces and he opens with e4 uh, let me just fix that uh, we have e5 by Xiong knight to f3 knight to c6 bishop b5 Rui Lopez is on the board and as we already mentioned knight to f6 we have the Berlin defense uh, we have d3 the uh, the the most popular line uh, nowadays bishop to c5 and now bishop captures uh, D captures, and here we have castles by Caruana. Uh, queen to e7 by black, knight b to d2, and bishop to g4. Uh, this has all uh, been played uh, before, so this is, uh, I believe both of them are well within their opening preparation. Uh, bishop to h5, now comes a3, black responds with a5, and knight to c4. Uh, knight to d7 by black. Uh, we have uh, g4 by white, pushing the bishop further back, bishop to g6, and now b4. And here we reach a position that was already on the board uh, in a game between Vishwanathan Anand and Hikaru Nakamura in the 2017 St. Louis uh, Blitz uh, Challenge. Uh, th that game ended in a draw, but it uh, it went uh, pawn captures, and then uh, Anand went the bishop to g5 with an attack on the queen. f6, and then a captures on b4. It was a really exciting game. Uh, in the end, it ended in a draw. But here, it's actually Jeffrey who uh, deviates from uh, from this well-known uh, game with bishop to b6. Uh, so we, we could say that it was either um, over the board spur of the moment that he decided to do this or uh, he was well prepared up until this point and this is now uh, a, a surprise for Fabiano. And uh, and uh, well, either way we have a completely new game now uh, already from move 12. Uh, here Caruana goes... Um, B captures on a5, bishop captures on a5, and now bishop to b2 uh, with a triple attack against the e5 pawn. And here f6, uh, Xiong defends it, and it's, uh, well, not uh, n nothing out of the ordinary for, for black to actually play f6 in, in any line of the Berlin defense. Uh, and here comes a move that uh, really surprises me. Here Caruana played knight captures on a5. Uh, knight to h4 followed by knight to f5 seems to be... Uh, the way to go and it, it is what uh, Caruana decided uh, for his plan after capturing the bishop. I just don't see why you would capture the bishop. Uh, you can always capture it. There's no way black can avoid you capturing it. Uh, I mean y uh, th there are no squares you can use use for the bishop and whatever you do white can always capture it so I don't see the point in capturing it immediately. Uh, but, you know, he, he was the World Chess Championship challenger, so what do I know? But if any of you have an idea uh, of why would you actually capture the bishop, do share, in, I mean, in the comments. Uh, knight captures. We have rook captures on a5, and now comes knight to h4. Uh, now going for the f5 square, it will be an excellent outpost for white's knight. Uh, we have castles by Xiong, and now knight to f5, uh, attacking the queen. And here you could capture it, I mean, it is a monster knight, uh, but then black gets a, a, a semi-open g-file for his rook, he can go king to h2, double rooks on the g-file, and he will push for advantage uh, that way. Uh, uh, Xiong decides to go queen to e6, just getting the queen out of the way, and now king to h2, Caruana makes room on the g-file for his rooks. Uh, we have c5, black has a double c-pawn, so of course uh, he wants to get rid of at least one of them, and he will do so by pushing c4 and attacking Caruana's center. Uh, we have h4, Caruana now uh, starts his uh, march on the king side, we have c4 and h5, bishop to f7 getting out of the way. Uh, and rook to g1, just uh, nicely positioning that rook on the g-file. Uh, c captures on d3, c captures, uh, and now rook to b5, going after the bishop uh, on b2. So this is why I said that it was really weird uh, uh, for that knight to capture the bishop immediately. You just, you just give black uh, ideas. Uh, but okay, bishop to c1, now this bishop will join the attack uh, using this diagonal. Uh, we have king to h8 by black, uh, perhaps uh, 
uh, preparing rook to g8, uh, bishop to e3 now, improving the position of the bishop and rook to b3. Uh, here, black's, uh, black's rook is nicely protected by both the queen and the bishop, and the black might use the idea of queen to a6 to pile up against the weak d3 pawn Karana has. Uh, we have rook to g3. After the bishop moves, the rook will also serve as a defender of the d3 pawn, but also once the queen moves, you will be able to double rooks uh, on the g file. Uh, here we have c5 by black, queen to e2, making room for the rook, and here black has to make a choice. Here black can go queen to a6, going after the d3 pawn, uh, and here just rook a to g1. And if you capture, queen captures on d3, then white will trade back, queen captures, rook captures, and now bishop to h6. This is the move uh, Caruana had in mind, uh, where you open up an attack against the rook on d3, but also pressure g7. So once black captures, rook captures, you would get bishop captures with check, king g8, rook captures uh, on g3, now you have to uh, move the rook, rook d8, uh, and here we would get this position where the material on the board is equal, uh, but it would be an opposite uh, opposite color bishop endgame, uh, but Coruana's position would be somewhat better due to such nice activity of the pieces. Uh, so, after queen to e2, uh, Xiong does not opt for this uh, queen to a6 idea, but rather he pushes g6, g5. He would like to close up the king side, uh, and if, uh, he, if he was able to do so, then surely the, the attack would stop, but Coruana is not interested. Uh, he plays h captures on g6 en passant, uh, we have bishop captures, and only now he plays a4, uh, preparing to, to push the pawn, but also not making it a target on a3. Uh, and now queen to a6 by Xiong, going after the d3 pawn. Uh, so we have the, the similar line, bishop to h6, going after the rook. Uh, rook to g8 now, <clears throat> uh, defending the g7 square, of course, uh, and rook a to g1. Here... Uh, uh, Caruana says, okay, I don't need my a4 pawn, and it's, uh, well, it's very interesting if uh, Xiong can capture it and survive the attack. Uh, the best uh, the best move for black here is just queen to e6, but uh, you will know that only after you see why. Uh, Xiong decided it was okay to capture the pawn, he played queen captures on a4, uh, and now feel free to pause the video and try to find Caruana's idea that he played in this game. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds if you want to decide whether to do it or not. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent punisher of uh, of pawn grabbers. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the idea is knight to e7. Uh, not, not all that uh, difficult to spot as it challenges the rook on g8, you have to move it, the bishop guards g7 and f8. So whatever you do, for example, if you move it, let's say rook e8, you attack the knight, then you get knight captures on g6. Uh, pawn captures and now g5 and the white is breaking through f5 you can capture and now finally you cannot recapture but black will then have a very impressive pawn on f6 if you capture queen h5 and black is getting checkmated very soon uh, so here after knight to e7 xiong decided that it was not possible to, to save the rook he played uh, uh queen to d4 uh, just, uh, you know, improving the position of the pieces, preparing rook to b2 uh, with an attack on the queen, but also with a double attack against the f2 pawn, as you see here. And now you could go back, you could go back bishop to e3, just kicking the queen away from such a nasty square, uh, or you can go with Caruana's idea. He played queen to d1, now attacking the rook and also inviting rook to b2. Uh, so here c4 was played. Uh, Xiong decided the uh, to protect the rook, and also if pawn captures, then queen will be able to capture on d1, uh, but now this is just too slow, Caruana just captures the rook on g8. We have knight captures on g8, king captures, and now d captures on c4, Caruana now doesn't mind trading queens, uh, but first we have rook captures on g3. Uh, queen captures on d4 is played, pawn captures on d4, and now king captures on g3, uh, and bishop captures on e4. So if you count uh, everything, uh, <clears throat> Uh, for the price of the exchange, uh, Xiong is up one pawn, uh, and it's uh, it's actually a, qu uh, a very nice pawn. It's it's a pass pawn already on d4. Uh, so rook to d1, uh, Caruana puts the rook in front of the pawn. <clears throat> uh, we have d3, uh, the bishop now protects the pawn, uh, and f3, kicking the bishop back. We have bishop to g6, uh, and now rook to a1. Uh, we have king to f7, you don't want to allow any rook to a8 checks while the bishop controls these uh, squares. Uh, we have rook to a7, 
and now comes knight to c5. Uh, it's very useful that the bishop covers the d2 square, you can never push the pawn to d2. Uh, we have bishop to e3, now attacking the knight, and once you remove the defender of the b7 pawn, well, black will just, white will just capture and, uh, you know, ha hasten his victory. <clears throat> uh, here, Xion played a very interesting move. King to e8. He offers uh, an entire piece uh, just uh, just uh, so he, he will be able to push his pawn forward. Uh, and Caruana calculates precisely. Caruana plays bishop captures on c5 uh, with d2. Now, how do you prevent the queening of the pawn? That's, uh, well, uh, that's uh, something you have to figure out. Uh, Caruana figured it out, but, you know, you are comfortable at your own home. So, once again, pause the video here and win this position with the white pieces. What do you play here? Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are a, an excellent winner of uh, games that should be won. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, if you found rook to a1, then you would not be winning this game. Just bishop to c2, and well, the pawn is getting promoted, you will have to give up your rook, uh, and it will be it will be a draw. Uh, but if you found a different move, the move Caruana played, uh, which is not rook to a1, but rather rook to a8 check, then you definitely deserve this win. Uh, so first you, you give a check, we have king to d7 by black, and now comes bishop to b6. This is the move you had to find. Now, even if why, even if black uh, brings a queen into the game, let's say you do this, rook e8 check, uh, king moves, you just uh, you just pick up the queen, and now you enjoy this winning endgame. So after king to b, after bishop to b6, uh, uh, final attempt by Xiong was uh, king to c6, uh, at least, you know, he will, he will grab the bishop. Uh, but here, Caruana just said, no, no, thank you, sir. He played the queen, to, uh, bishop to a5, and now the pawn from c4 create, uh, and the bishop create a wall against the black king, so you can no longer harass the bishop, uh, and whatever you do here uh, will just, uh, will just, uh, well, uh, end, end in a win. Now, uh, if you promote to a queen, a queen uh, now you don't have a check to, uh, to pick up the queen, but now you get rook checks here. And then when the king moves, whatever you do, let's say you go here, now you deliver check, king moves, and now you pick up the queen. So it's pretty much the same idea, but it's uh, it's just a wonderful uh, wonderful move, this bishop to a5. Just, you know, the, the final nail in the coffin, uh, where uh, where you allow black to have a queen on the board, and even uh, he will not lose it immediately, but, you know, everything is precisely calculated. And uh, it was in this position after bishop to a5 uh, that Jeffrey uh, Xiong resigned the game. And a first victory for Fabiano Caruana in a long time, so uh, Magnus Carlsen will not be able to, to troll him on Twitter anymore, at least not uh, on that regard. And like I said, I did prepare the, the standings after round 6 of the US Championship 2019, so let's check it out. Uh, in first place, with 4 out of 6, the only person, Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, then with 3.5, we have 4 people, Linier Dominguez Perez, Fabiano Caruana now with this victory, Wesley So and Samuel Sevian. Then with 3.3 people, Alexander Lenderman, Ray Robson and Jeffrey Xiong now after losing this game. With 2.5, uh, Awandra Liang and Samuel Shankland, last year's winner, but you know, it's still early, he might, he might uh, get up there. Uh, the end in uh, last place with two points of Varuza, Var Varuza Nakobian and Timor Garev. Uh, Timor Garev, although he is definitely one of the most exciting players uh, to play in this championship and, uh, you know, uh, worldwide even, uh, you know, with, uh, with exciting games, uh, you will not often see many points. Uh, it's just the way chess works. Uh, but yeah, whenever you get a chance to check out a game by Timor Garev, you know, do, do check it out. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it uh, and that you're enjoying my well, short coverage of the U.S. Championship 2019 so far. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dennis Zanforlini, uh, Magnus Carlson, Dominic Ebert, uh, Kais Dababex, uh, and Milos Vucinic for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with some more 60 frames per second action. Uh, and yeah, uh, see you soon. Ha have an excellent rest of your day.